Good morning. We're in Singapore. And what are we doing in Singapore? Mainly here to do some food exploration. But because this time our stay in Singapore is relatively short, about 10 days, so we'll be mainly touching on hawker foods. We are gonna do slightly visit some of the places that I used to frequent before the pandemic. Try out some local foods such as Bao Chao Mi, Hei Mi, Laksa, Cha Kui Piao, and first visit a couple of other hawker centers that I've not visited before. Today we're gonna start with what I think is a dish that is truly unique to Singapore, Bao Chao Mi. Means pork noodles, springy noodles, sauce in the spicy sambal, along with a concoction of sauces such as fish sauce and nut oil, elevated by a dash of vinegar tang, adorned by fresh pork pieces, crackling lots in an umami dried place or flounder. And we're sitting at the oldest and arguably the best Batsami stall in Singapore, Hill Street Tawa Batsami, located along Crawford Lane. This establishment is founded in 1932 by Mr. Tang Jun Tiu. So it's been around for 90 years. <laughs> it's been around for 90 years. So it's a 3D long time. And I believe now it's run by the second generation, Mr. Tang Che Seng. And you can see Mr. Tang preparing all the ingredients before they open shop. They actually came really early. And beside him, this other uncle, he has been with him for more than a decade. Ever since I started eating here about 12 13 years ago, this uncle has been in the front cooking the noodles. The ordering process goes like this. If you come, they open at 9.30, if you come before they open, you pick a number. And then you're going to find your seat and you wait. Until they open, you give them your number, place your orders, and then you watch them cook up your noodle in front of you. And the people who come later than 9.30, they will have to queue up behind those who have taken numbers. Oh, and before I forget, they have also received one Michelin star since 2016. And they are the only remaining hawker stall in Singapore to retain its one Michelin star to date. So we are here to find out today if they still hold their magic in their bak chor mee. Bak chor mee is here. And obviously I got a large portion since we are queuing anyway, right? But luckily we came early. So it was not exactly a very long queue, about 30 minutes tops, we are the sixth on the line. Let's take a look, we have got some beautiful springy yellow noodles coated with a nice sambal sauce, nice looking pork pieces, some minced pork, the liver looks pinkish, and this is kipo, or what we call bian yu. In English, I'm not sure whether it's place or flounder. I'm guessing it's likely flounder because place I think is more of a European flat fish. Now as beautiful as the presentation looks, I think the best way to eat it is toss it all up, get the flavors to mingle together and we are ready to go. Oh, the taste is nostalgia. It's so, so spicy. The sambal hits you moderately. And then you get that umami, the savoriness of the mixture of the soy sauce, fish sauce, the lard oil, I think. This time around, I did struggle to get that vinegar tang though. It seems that they have cut down on the vinegar tang. Normally, it's more tangy. You'll get this huge hit of this vinegar tang right at the back. That tanginess is what really lifts this bowl of noodles. Noodles, perfectly chewy. It's got a nice bounce. In fact, I would say, a few more seconds you will have been overcooked. And you don't taste any alkaline flavor in the noodles, which I think is extremely impressive. Considering this kind of noodles, they normally have the light water taste. And because we tossed the noodles before we started eating, you get all the beautiful minced pork coated together with the noodles. And they didn't marinate their pork, which retains the freshness of the pork. And you get the natural porky sweetness of the pork. Mm. Pork slices, tender enough. It has not been tenderized, which I quite like because it has got that nice chew to it. Liver. Mm. <laughs> the umami of the liver, the bitterness. It's tender, it's got a nice chew to it. You know, a lot of people tend to overcook it and it becomes tough, it becomes chewy. But the way Ta Hua cooks their liver, it's always pinkish, they never fail. And it's so fresh. We're gonna try the pork ball. 
Mm. If my memory serves me right, it used to be bouncier. Now it's sort of a little bit more less bouncy. A mouthful of the soup. Oh, oh! Today's pork soup is on point. It's sweet. Okay, this place not every time they will do the pork soup perfectly right, but this time I think it's really on point. Hmm. There is a sweetness in the soup. You get that porkiness from long hours of boiling pork bones. And then, the undertone of seaweed sweetness. This is why you get all this seaweed here. It really elevates the flavour. I also noticed they have this tong chai. It's like a preserved vegetable. And it adds to the flavour of this soup. It's a very addictive soup. I would call it a robust soup, but it's not a rich tasting cloy soup. <laughs> it's umami and when it is done right it's not bitter it has depths of the sea along with oil fragrance and the pork lard it's not the most robust pork lard that i've ever had not the most explosive but it is explosive enough because in this bowl of noodles there are so many things going on the pork lard is just a side character to help out with the flavor layers of this bowl of noodles I think they added dried flounder powder in there as well. It's very umami. The skin doesn't feel too thick. It's there, it's very present, but it is meaty enough to sort of make you ignore the skin. I quite like it. And you can definitely taste vinegar in there. That is the thing that we are looking for. That's what really brings this to the next level. Really gives you that, that salivation. Definitely a decadent bowl of batami, especially the $10 one. Mm -hmm. Noodles are perfectly chewy today. Sauce mix is spicy enough with the undertone of savory from the lard oil, fish, and soy sauce mix. Vinegar could have been way more present though. I remember they used to give this really magical vinegar tang at the end of each bite. And that tang is very paramount in inducing the salivation as you take bite after bite. In today's case, it's, it's quite a bummer really. Mm -hmm. um, you could barely taste the vinegar in the noodles. The addition of the explosive pork lard and fragrant dried flounder elevates this dish to new heights. Especially the dried flounder. It is done so well that you don't taste any bitterness at all. That is very paramount because what it retains is all that umami, the sea flavour of the dried flounder. They are one of the very few stores that have done it perfectly. And we both love the ingredients. The pork slices remain tender and their own natural flavour, especially yeah, the pork liver. It's juicy, tender and it's little bit pink. Probably the best pork liver that we have had today. And the wonton is also done really really well. It looks like it doesn't have that much filling. It's also not the thinnest wonton skin you have seen. Yep. But as you bite in, it's very meaty, surprisingly. Mm. And it's very well flavoured. I think really there's some dried flounder powder inside because it's very umami. And I have to say their soup is really on point today. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. They are not really consistent. Sometimes the soup is better, sometimes it's not as flavorful, but today is super on point. Alright, that's all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the so-called bad stuff. Okay, to be very honest, uh, in the past 10 over years they have eaten at Tawa Batomi. They have lost quite a bit of their magic, la, I'll be honest. So it used to blow you away when you take your first bite, like really crazy good, maybe 5-6 years ago. Yeah. But now it's sort of tapered off quite a bit of excitement. It's no longer as punchy, the flavours. Yeah. So I'm guessing maybe because of the proportion of the sauce. Different. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, maybe due to inflation and all that stuff, the ingredients have been shrinking quite a bit. Mm. I don't know, maybe they give you more noodles, but they didn't add on the sauce Soft. proportion. Yeah. So it's a little bit off now. It's still a really good mm -hmm. and well-executed noodle. If you're eating for the first time, you probably 
you don't think there's anything wrong but if you have been a long time uh, patron of this shop I believe you guys will have noticed uh, it used to be really insanely good yeah. and I don't use the word insanely very often the other point that I want to bring to your attention is they are inconsistent mm. uh, which I understand it happens to every restaurant even the Michelin star fine dining restaurants if you go there frequent enough they will be inconsistent this we are all human ultimately but just a personal observation in the past maybe 4-5 or five years there have been more inconsistencies but today I would say it's one of the better days uh. a lot mm. of things are quite on point point. Yeah. and with that being said Taohua Ba Chong Mi scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate which means it is some high quality Ba Chong Mi right there absolutely recommended I still think this is probably the best Ba Chong Mi in Singapore mm. but maybe 5 years ago it would have been an easy one plate now it's more like a half a plate and then sometimes on bad days it might drop to an okay so better in mind, really better in mind, it's important. Okay, okay, at this point you guys are probably wondering, is it worth one Michelin star? We look at it this way. If you look at the technical aspect of it, the preparation of the pork pieces, the ingredients, the noodles, they are basically what a one Michelin fine dining restaurant would have done if they were to prepare a bowl of noodles. So from that perspective, we understand why they retain their one Michelin star for this many years. However, on the aspect of excitement, the wow factor of the noodles, I think it's lacking quite a bit. I would say when they first attained their Michelin star in 2016, it was a no-brainer. Mm. It's like, come on, they will definitely get that one Michelin star. It's that good, that insanely good. But over the years, as I mentioned, the excitement of the flavors has yes, sort of tapered off. So it's still a really good bowl of noodles, but... It likes the magic. Yeah, it likes the magic. <laughs> la, yeah. So, so you, you probably want to lower the expectations a little bit. And I think it's more like a big command spot, mm. in a way. A really, really good, proper big command spot. Alright guys, I guess that is it for our food vlog for the day. Tomorrow we'll be going to a food court where we'll be trying a few different foods so that'll be a bit lengthier. Hope to see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this food vlog, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you have to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Till you again next week in Singapore. Bye-bye.